Hi guys, this is Jar Arts Fight and welcome to another tutorial. This is my second tutorial on this channel after I've rebooted it. I decided to bring back this channel and as you probably saw, I am now partnered. Um, I haven't got a background yet as I'm recording this video, but as I'm recording it, it's being made. So getting a partner background, we're going all the way. We're going to be making tutorials and edits. It's going to be amazing, guys. We're going to have some amazing stuff coming towards you. And also just want to say a big thank you to um, JSHD and... Um, tutorial market because they've been a big help to me. I actually just had my first tutorial uploaded there um, This one will be uploaded there eventually um, Maybe in the next couple of days or so I'm not sure but I'm planning to upload this either tonight if I finish it in time and get it done by 8 o'clock or later on tomorrow um, but Yeah, I'm just gonna get right to the tutorial guys because I don't want to delay and keep talking so um, the effect we're gonna be creating in this tutorial is oh, Phone vibrates um, sorry. Okay, so this is the effect we're going to be there. I can't speak today. We're going to be creating this. Now, so that the effect we're doing is on this one, the scope rings. Now, I see this quite a lot. It's quite easy to make, and um, it's a really nice effect. Like it's, I used it in quite a few edits in the past. Um, we're not doing any just like color correction or anything. I might just stuff it on so it looks nice. Be able to done up that the glow on this, the rings, how it looks nice, and everything is so. It doesn't take that long to do, if I'm honest. It, the only thing, the, the only thing that takes a long time is the actual keyframing, the movement, and uh, so on. So yeah, let's just jump right into it. I'm using After Effects CS6. Um, so I've got my clip here. We're just going to make a new composition. Um, I'm just going to call it Main. Uh, 20 seconds long. I shall make make it 10, can't I? Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Yep, that should be enough. All right, so I've got the clip here. I'm just going to drop this in, and we're going to go to somewhere like oh, there's quite a bit of intro into this clip. Uh, where are we going to go? Where are we going to go? This will do. So we're going to go to the beginning again. I'm just going to drag it back to where we want it to be. There we go. And then he gets the, actually it's a bit too soon, I think. So he gets the no scope clap there, and then boom, scope comes in here. So you want roughly there. So we're gonna, we're gonna hold down shift and press one. So you create a marker here. Now this is where we kind of want the fade in of the ring stop here. When the scope isn't, like it's not here because that would mean, you can do it from here, but you need to do a lot of masking and so on. I'm gonna do it from here though, because um, it's a nice start and it because it goes by so quick when you zoom in um, it's hard to tell and then it's going to stop and it's going to fade out roughly by there so I'm going to hit 2 alright so hold down shift and press 2 so that's how you create markers so marker 1 and 2 alright so we've done this now the next thing is actually creating the rings now to do this you want to hit the new composition button do width 500 and height 500 now it won't let you do both 500 if this box is ticked. If you tick that box and I go back to 1280, you'll see this the height is now 1280. So you want to set this to 500, um, and it's being weird for some reason. Basically, most of the times if that's ticked, it won't let you do the same in each box. Um, so actually, if I do this and then that ticket, so it looks aspect ratio at 16 by 9. If I change this to now 500 you'll see it changes that one to a dip weird number. So just untick that and put it to 500. Um, 59.94 frames and just maybe make it like, I don't know, uh, let's think, let's do five seconds long. Right, there we go. Now, it doesn't matter what you call it, I'm just gonna call it rings. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is come along up here to next to the pen tool. You want to hold down on the rectangle tool, hold the mouse button down and click the ellipse tool. Uh, make sure the fill is on white and the stroke width is on 20 up here. And then double click on the actual ellipse tool. And you'll see it's made a circle for us there. Now, if you do this, it will make a circle. If there's no stroke, it'll make a circle the exact size of the composition, so 500 by 500. But because there's a stroke 20, you'll see it will go outside because its stroke adds onto the exist existing space. So we have this. Um, circle here now. We're just going to change the scale down a bit as well. So it's something like 80 or scale, something like that. 
So we've got this circle, nothing really important happening here. So what you want to do now is you want to click the down arrow next to the shape that we just created, go to transform, go to contents, ellipse one, fill one, and bring the opacity down to zero. Zero not. Okay. Now you've just got the ring here, which is starting to look how you want it. You then want to click the arrow next to the stroke, stroke one, and click on the plus next to dashes. And boom, you've got loads of dashes now. You want to hit the plus once again, and you get the gap. Now, the gap affects how big the gap is, so you can go up to like whatever you want. Um, so there's 186, 187, there we go, we've got some really small dots now. And you can then increase the dashes. This in the dash increases the dash size here. So let's say we can do something like that. Now we've got four dashes. That have all got a gap of 187. Now you can increase this to increase the amount of dashes and you know, with something like that. So we've got our rings. We just mess around with the dash and the gap and you've got the rings. Now you can simply press Command or Control D on the shape layer, hit the S button and just scale it, the new one down so it's a bit smaller. And again, go to Contents, Ellipse, Stroke and hit the down arrow next to the dashes and you can just play around with this to increase more dashes uh, probably not that many uh, something like that there you go so now we've got the smaller dashes on the inside which is more of and the bigger dashes on the outside now they're not moving yet and that's the easy part you want to simply hit select them both by holding shift press R the, ro the rotation button hit the keyframe there go along to five seconds and I'm going to change this value here, the second one, make sure they're not both selected now, to six. And the one underneath I'm going to change to minus six. Now basically this first number, the one that isn't the degrees, affects how many 360s it does. Now there's 360 degrees in a circle. So this is going to go around 360 degrees times six. So I'm not going to do that because I don't like doing maths. But as you see, as you scroll through it, you'll see the values increase. Now they're spinning opposite ways as well, which is cool. So you can see each time it gets to 360, you just go to there, it changes from 1 to 2, because it's done two 360 degree rotations. So you can change that to however many rotations you want, the more the faster. So we've got our spinning rings now. It wasn't too hard to do, was it? You want to then drop the rings composition into the main composition. Uh, you can align it, so we, we have it now and it doesn't look very good. So if you'll say over here, you want to click 1, press the 1 button on your keyboard and it goes to the marker there. Now you can then hit the square, the open square bracket button and that will align the first, comp the like, the layer you've selected to the frame you've selected. So if I go a frame back, you'll see it's not there, but on frame 1 it starts appearing. So that's a pretty cool trick you can keep in the future. Now it does also, obviously, it's not the right size or anything. So now we're going to do the heart, the kind of the bit that takes the most time. So you want to hold down Shift, press T. Oh, whoops! Make sure it's selected. Press T, then hold down Shift and press S and P. That brings up the position, the scale, and the opacity. So you can zoom in a bit here so we can see the individual frames. Just so. Oh, a bit too far. There we go. Now you want to hit the keyframe, the stopwatches on all of them. So now we've got four of these buttons. Now you want to position it. So we're going to go to there roughly, so it looks like it's roughly in the center. Can you bring the scale down? So it roughly now matches the scope. So it doesn't have to be exact because this is the zoom in bit. And then hold down Command or Control and press the right arrow to go forward a frame. Then you basically want to readjust it, bring the scale back up, and voila. You want to basically want to keep doing this until the scope stops moving and he's actually in the center. Now you can use the scope, um, the actual HUD on the scope already to help you align it better. But I'm just going to go like this, like so. Uh, again, command. Right, and now as you can see, the scope is actually pretty much stationary now. So even though the gun is moving, because the gun's moving, the scope stays in the middle. Now here, he actually the scope actually gets bigger when he 
shoots the bullet. So we're going to go to here, just pre shoots. Hit these, the keyframes for all of them, actually not opacity. Um, there we go. Again, go to the next frame. And it goes up by like a couple. So we're going to change this to maybe 84. And just read just a little bit. Go to the next frame. We're going to have a bit more, maybe 86. And just adjust it again. Just so it looks like it's about right. Fold the frame again. It looks like it hasn't changed, so just hit those ones there so we have a keyframe. Now, this is where it starts scaling down again. So, you want to scale it down, realign, forward, back, scale down, so it's like there, go forward again. This is the kind of the time consuming process where you're just going to basically keep adjusting it until you're happy with it. And when it gets to here, one more time, because that's how far we decided we wanted it. And I'm just literally, literally guessing at how big I should make the scale. Um, so there we go. So now if you look as he zooms in, scope's there, and boom, and then it goes with him as he zooms out. And the th only thing we need to do now is the opacity. So on keyframe two, hit the opacity keyframe, and go back, go, so hit command or control left twice, and chain, hit the keyframe for the opacity again, so it's set at 100. I'll go back to the marker at 2 and bring the opacity down to 0. Do the same on keyframe 1, go forward 2 frames, and then go back 2 frames, set it to 0, and voila. So now, it appears as he scopes in, and boom, and it fades out. So we've got the actual scope effect now. So it's really cool, you can see it spinning around, and what you can do now is to have a bit of fun with it, you can add in a glow or star glow. So if you have the plugin star glow from trap code, you can drag it onto the effect. And it does go a bit crazy, and obviously you can see the borders because it's just the 500 by 500 composition. What you can do is change the street length down to something like 2. And you see it's got this nice kind of glow to it now. And you can change the preset to whatever you want. I like star prism, it gives us some nice blues and reds. And it's got this nice effect here, and you can see it fades in with it, it spins around, and does carries on. And then you can add a glow over the top of that, and now it looks even glowier. <laughs> and if, even if you don't have a star glow, the glow can still make it look really good. When I first used this effect, I didn't use star glow, um, and I had a glow, and what you can actually do is you can change the colour. So in the rings composition, you can just find, say, the middle one. You can just click the fill up here, change it maybe red. Hit OK. Oh, why doesn't that change it? Oh, I don't know why. Um, it's because it's not the fill, it's the stroke. Uh, change the stroke to red. There we go. Uh, on the other one, you can do green. Why should we do blue? Think about it. Go back. Oh. There we go. So with the glow on, it's pretty cool. You can then add the stars way back on. Um, it does it from lightness. So I'll do red. And obviously with star glow the colours don't work extremely well. Um, I forgot that it doesn't do that. But yeah you can increase the glow radius, you can I'm not gonna go into how to use glow because it's quite a complicated um, effect. But you can like increase the intensity so it glows a bit more and so on. But yeah it's a really nice effect. Um let's put star glow back on because I prefer it with star glow. It looks better in my opinion but obviously it is truly up to you. It's your edit, and I don't need just to copy all my settings. Like mess around, have maybe more than one, more than two rings. Have maybe one, have maybe loads in the middle. Um, you just need to basically make it your your own. So do something with it that you haven't, that you wouldn't see someone do. Like I don't know how fast these are going, so I'm just gonna turn the sound off and round previous just to see how fast they go. Now that actually goes, that's going pretty fast. So I'm actually gonna. Um, say maybe do four rotations instead of six, like so. We just round preview it again. I see it's going a lot um, slower now. It looks good. You can add a bit of motion blur if you want. So you can click the toggle switches slash modes button. Hit the one with the three circles. You can tick that one, and then click this one here. And if we render that out again. Can see there's a bit of motion blur there, so it looks pretty cool. And literally, just play around with it like, make your own settings, do what you want, 
and see how it looks. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I love this effect, it's great fun using, and it's not that boring to make, it's really entertaining to make. So be sure to leave a like, comment, add it to favourites if you liked it and you want to come back and see it. Um, in the comments section, comment on what tutorials you want to see. I want to make tutorials for you guys, so anything you would like to see, tell me, because if I don't know how to do it, I'll figure it out. And yeah, whatever you want, guys, just comment below. And thank you for watching, and I shall see you guys later.